just got to meet Daisy Duck and she was so sweet. She like fully understood that I was blind, so she let me feel her hands. You're not allowed to touch the rest of the costume, like to keep it pristine and stuff, but I got to touch her hands and she made sure at the end after I, my mom got a photo with her, she grabbed my hand and like put my hand onto my mom's hand to make sure I knew where my mom was. It was so sweet. All right, you guys, today, this blind girl is taking on Disney Sea in Tokyo. It is the only Disney Sea park in the world, I believe. And it's literally like an under the sea themed Disney park. You guys know your girl loves a mermaid. I love Ariel. So uh, as, a, as a mermaid myself, mermaid swimming videos here for proof. Um, I am very excited. I even wore my sweater that has fish on it. I don't know, I don't know where they are, but there's fish on it. <laughs> so I'm very excited. I'm really intrigued to check out the accessibility of the park as a blind tourist. I think this is gonna be really, really fun. I'm sad because I know Elton John would have had the most fun. Elton John would have loved this, wouldn't he? Loved. So I'm a little sad that he's missing it, but I can't wait, so let's go to Disney. All right, so we just got in past security and we've come to the information desk um, because at the information desk, we can get all the disability guest services which includes some really cool and unique things like having tactile renderings of all of the rides and characters so that before I go on rides, I can actually feel the ride so I can understand and conceptualize what I'm about to go on and experience, which is frankly incredible. Like I've been to many theme parks in my life. I've never had that offered before. And I can feel all of the characters since I can't see them as I'm walking around. So I'm really excited to get the tactile renderings of everything so I can feel those. However, something that's really interesting is despite the fact that I do have my cane in hand, which is, I have a red and white cane because it's from Canada. In Canada, everybody uses a red and white cane because it makes it more highly visible in snowy environments. Um, whereas in the US, um, red and white represents low vision and all white represents blind. So even though technically I should have an all white cane to represent more closer to like full blindness, um, because mine's Canadian, it's red and white since that's the only ones we have in Canada. Anyways, they use the same ones in, in Japan. Red and white is recognized as blindness all over the world. Um, and so despite the fact that I do have my cane, they did ask me to prove my disability, which is something that's super interesting um, because of course, living somewhere like North America, particularly in America, ADA law protects against that. You cannot ask somebody to provide proof of disability. Um, but when you travel, you enter their culture, right? So I accept that I've entered their culture and I'm completely okay providing proof of my disability. We did have to sit down and like dig up what proof might be and we have to hope they accept that proof. Um, in my case, I dug up my CNID card, which is my Canadian National Institute for the Blind card. If that fails, I do have like my mirror card um, that shows that I went for guide dog training. But because CNID is a bigger organization, I figured that would work better. Um, and then if all else fails, I could provide medical records from Sick Kids Hospital from my ophthalmologist. Um, again, all of it's in English, so I don't, I'm not sure. It'll be really interesting, but just something to note that if you do come to uh, theme parks in Japan and want disability services, you will have to provide proof that you are disabled. I think there's pros and cons to having to provide proof and there's pros and cons to legally not allowing people to provide proof um, or not requiring them to. Um, but I'm not here to debate that. <laughs> I'm, like I said, completely fine providing it. Um, and I understand that I've walked into their culture and their rules and their laws and... Okay, so I just finished at Guest Relations. This is so cool. So they have this map. Again, it's all in Japanese Braille, not English. But it is so cool. I took one anyways um, because I can still feel all the tactile. Map. This is so well done. Like, I can't tell you. This is so well done. All of the Braille is so, so tactile. Okay, my Braille readers will understand me. It's like that perfect level of tactile without being like sharp. Like, it's it's plastic, so it can't be like rubbed down like the paper Braille can be, but it's not like sharp where it hurts your fingers to read. That is such a niche thing. Very few people will understand. So those are all the pages. It's high color contrast, large print, and then it has maps, tactile maps, of all of the different areas with braille labeling. Isn't this incredible, Mom? It's fabulous. It's so, so clear, so well done. Each page has all of the large print writing, and then you flip through, it has all the braille, it has all the tactile areas. Like, this is... I'm so impressed. And then, I also got to feel 
all the different characters, which also had braille on them and a tactile button that you could push and it would make them talk. So this is the tactile map? Yeah, this is the tactile map of Disney Sea with braille on it. It's cool to feel. Yeah. Yes, this is the shop. This is the shop? Shop, yes. And shop near it is a Hotel Miracostas. Okay. Yeah, this one here. Yes. And what's this? Uh, this is, is this is uh, a wood. It is a big tree. <laughs> Mini Mouse Molly. <laughs> Look at the bow. Oh, her eyelash. Do you like Mini? Yeah. Look at her little heels. Yes. They're pointy. And here comes Mickey. <laughs> and this is uh, Mickey. <laughs> he speaks Japanese. <laughs> You just press the little button yeah. and, it, and it talks. And there's braille. Does Mini talk? Yes, Mini talks. <laughs> Goofy, the big one. <laughs> oh, oh my god. You feel his long ears, Molly? Oh, oh the ears. <laughs> and his hat. Yes, and his ears. And his big nose. Yes. Oh, Mom, Elton would love him. <laughs> This is so fun. Oh. Oh. Look at his tongue. Oh, and it really is like a sailor, isn't it, Mom? Yeah, it is. <gasps> look, so at his, look at his little bow. Oh, and his feet. And then the braille, and he talks. <laughs> Yeah, sitting here, it is a hill. Yes. <laughs> cool. This one is an Indiana Jones the car. <laughs> yes. Indiana Jones. So it goes. Oh yeah, you sit. Yeah. Uh, all the here. seats. And it's the fish. Yeah, it's the fish. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, the eyes and the beak and yes. the little fins yes. and the tail. The tail yes. <laughs> it round, go around. Yeah, there we go yeah. Around here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and there's a little tail. Yes. And then your feet go in here. Yes. Do you walk in here? Yes. Walking this in this, this entrance, this one here, and here enter this hotel and light up elevator and up and down. Yeah. I'm so obsessed. This is so fun. The band is going by. What do they look like? They're all in like a creamy white with their uh, hats are creamy white and their instruments and it looks beautiful. We're in the park. We've made it. It's like nice and clear. We got a beautiful day. Yesterday was very gray, cold and rainy. And today's the opposite. It is like 22, 23 degrees, pure sun. It is perfect. Don't let my wool sweater fool you. It is beautiful out. <laughs> Here we're seeing a really blue body of water with a bunch of gondola canoe things with some like fish netting on them. There's a stone bridge in the background with archways that the boats will go under. It's very pretty. You pretend you're in Italy. Can I go on a boat ride? I want to go on a boat ride. Okay, so we just went to the first ride and essentially what they told us at guest services is that the first ride you go to, you have to prove your disability they'll give you like your time to come back so you don't have to wait in line. Um, they gave us a 30 minute time, so in 30 minutes we'll go back to get on the first ride. And they said that after you prove it to the first ride, you don't have to prove it to the next ones. So hopefully that's the case. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about this. I think they need a better system for disabled tourists. Maybe they just don't get a lot of disabled tourists. You know, we exist. Hi, I'm right here. And I think they need a better system because essentially there is a system with the government here in Japan where people with disabilities get a, pa a badge from the government. It has a red cross on it, like a medical red cross. Now this is something that people with disabilities, whether it's a physical disability, a mental disability, a hidden disability, a visible disability, whatever it is, anybody with any kind of disability who has this government badge can wear it 
places like public transit or at Disney parks and it makes them visible to other people as being disabled. So for example, I think about my friends with invisible disabilities who would benefit from being able to sit on the accessible seating on public transit, but nobody ever offers it to them. Or people glare at them when they sit there because they don't, quote, look disabled. And people don't understand that they actually do need that. And so I think having this badge is a great idea and it's up to you if you want to wear it. Like you don't need to wear it if you don't want to, but it's nice that there's a government issued essentially ID that identifies you publicly as being disabled so that if you feel like you would benefit from that or you want to identify yourself as disabled, you can do so. Now that's the proof they're looking for. They're looking for me to show my government issued red cross patch. I don't have that because I don't live in Japan, so the government isn't going to give me one of those. And so it's a little tricky because we have a language barrier, of course, and we're using translation apps, which aren't always accurate or smooth or the best, especially with like loud music, trying to pick up your voice and stuff. Um, and so then we're showing them like a CNIB card, which isn't something they've ever seen. Um, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, but I would be really curious to hear, you know, I know I have so many disabled people who watch me and loved ones of disabled people with all different kinds of disabilities. What do you think of this government issued badge that you can wear publicly to identify yourself as disabled? Is this something you would like implemented where you live? Why or why not? I'd love to kind of debate it and hear the pros and cons that you can think of in the comment section down below. Keep in mind, Japan is incredibly safe and the crime rate here is very low because the only real con I can see. Granted, I physically identify myself as disabled everywhere I go, whether I'm using my cane or my guide dog, people can see I'm disabled. But the only con I can see is perhaps it would make you more vulnerable to crime. But given this is such a safe country, that risk is much lower. So anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so we're grabbing lunch. We just went on our first ride. It was an AR ride. How did you how did you feel about it, Eve? It was fun, actually. I, I was enjoying it. Which, it was it was really actually fun. You my know, mom's like, not a ride person. No. So I was a little nervous for her. It has to be very gentle for me, like the real little kitty ones. That's about my speed. So we are now getting ready to go on a gondola ride. So it's like a little boat ride. We're on our little faux gondola ride, like we're in Venice. Oh, cheering for us. So Love that. I'm so excited to go on the Little Mermaid ride. I'm having my mom describe it to me because again, I get a little anxious, not knowing what's ahead. But she said it's very gentle and peaceful and there's lots of young kids coming off. So us two motion sickness girlies should be just fine. I'm on the ride. I'm very excited. I'm ready. I think it's going to be fun. So my mom wants me to try to describe it, but I actually obviously can't see it. So I don't know what it looks like, but she said it looks something like under the sea. If you were under the sea, like with all like, it's kind of dark with all these very, very pretty lights. It's so cool and little rides and stuff. Correction, it's the Little Mermaid area, not the Nemo area, because uh, I can hear the, the, the aerial music. And I think we're going on a flounder ride. I think it's flounder, is that who it is? I, I think know. it's flounder, yeah. Like we're It's not... like, like big go fish, but I'm pretty sure it's flounder. Maybe it is a me mix of Nemo and aerial under here? I don't know. I think so, yeah. I think it's just a mix see... of the underworlds. But it's really, it's gonna be like a nice up and down, a nice, ge another gentle ride for the motion sickness girlies. So uh, we'll, we'll be able to handle this one. Lines are very stressful for me because unless my mom tells me that she's moving and I grab her on time, I have no idea we're moving. So the amount of times that she's moved forward and I just stand <laughs> standing still and then she looks back, she's like, Molly, over here. That's why I like when they give us like a time and we get to come back and not wait in the line because I find them very overwhelming. There's like so many people and so many sounds and I can't see what's going on. Just to clarify, they do have that same system and we did use it on a couple of rides. My mom just didn't think the line was that long for this one and then it's accidentally longer than she thought. And I keep getting <laughs> lost. So now I just, I'm holding onto her backpack so I don't get lost, but it is easier when we use that system. So for the next ride, we'll use that again, I think. We're next to get on the ride and I was saying to my mom, it's so cool because this is one of the rides that I felt the wooden uh, recreations of. So I actually have like a very good idea in my mind for the first time ever that I'm riding a ride, what the ride looks like. And it was the same for the boat ride that we went on. I had a very clear idea of where I was going to sit and what the experience would be like because I felt the wood uh, recreation. So I, it's like truly, it genuinely benefits me. <laughs> so Molly was scared that she was going to go on some like really 
dangerous ride, but this is just a boat. My mom is convincing me it's just a nice boat going down the river. Oh, it's called Molly Brown. <laughs> is it, wait, is it actually? Yeah, it's called Molly Brown. The boat's oh called God, Molly Brown. It's meant to be, okay? It's a good sign. <laughs> I'm unsinkable. It'll be fine. I don't know, Nia. It feels like a wild ride so far. <laughs> I was very tired and honestly quite sunburnt after our day at Disney Sea, so I didn't get any more clips from that day. We only stayed for about five hours, which was about as much as I could handle. I get pretty drained and obviously in Japan we are like every single day so I was pretty tired. I wish I had stayed longer because it was really fun and I think there was so much more we could have explored and seen but you know you gotta listen to your body and I listened to my body. I went home, got a great night's sleep but I have to say the accessibility at Disney Sea was incredible as a blind person. I've personally never been to a theme park including any other Disney park that offered the services they offered like having the tactile um, replicas of the rides, which is something I genuinely found very helpful. The one ride that I went on, or the two rides that I went on that I had already felt the wooden sculpture of, I felt so much less nervous getting on those rides than the ride that I went on, or the rides that I went on that I had not felt it. And I was like, mom, describe it to me. What does it look like? What is it doing? Like I felt much more anxious going onto those rides. So I really wish this was something more theme parks did. And I would be curious to start exploring some other Disney parks with my guide dog to see what it's like. And if they do have any of these services now, since it has been quite a while since I've been to a Disney park. I also want to mention that they did give me a map, which outlined all of the accessibility features in the park. Uh, including which rides were service dog friendly, which I thought was really cool. And I also want to mention that if you are someone who lives in Japan and or speaks Japanese, you can let the park know ahead of time that you are blind and going to be attending with your dates and they will send you a CD with an audio description of the park as well as that tactile and braille map that I received at the park ahead of time so that you can prepare and start to make some mental maps in your mind of what you're going to experience once you arrive, which I think is awesome, but that is something that is only available in Japanese. So obviously I did not benefit from that, but wanted to mention it for sure. Cause I think that's a really cool feature that again, I have never heard of at any other theme park. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but let me know if you have ever heard of or experienced these types of accessibility features at other parks around the world. As mentioned, I got a great night's sleep and then I woke up to go to Hello Kitty World and to go to the Snoopy Museum on our final full day in Japan. And we went this day with our guide from the first day, or as my mom would say, our guide dog from the first day, <laughs> show. Um, show we had as our guide the entire first day and the entire last day. And he was just so incredible. And actually, I'm seeing him here in LA tomorrow. I found one of these vending machines that has like all the Sanrio cartoon characters and stuff on it. And look, there's Braille where you put the money in. There's Braille to show you where to put the money in. And I'm gonna get a drink. Okay. Hopefully I do this right. And then one, two, that's the one I want. <gasps> Yay, it worked. Oh, that was quick. Do I open here? Mm -hmm. Oh. I got it. It's a lemon soda. Okay, so I just got my friend Sho a drink. I got him a Japanese energy drink and I was like doing a clip for my Instagram story and it stole my money and never gave me the drink. It's so cute. Now so Sho's was phoning to get us help so we get our drink. <laughs> All right, well, we wait on Sho's drink. I'm gonna try mine. I love lemon soda. I love anything lemon. So this one's pretty lemony. Oh, it is sour. It, it really hits you in waves. The flavor like comes in waves. <laughs> Here, let me try it. It's like right at the end, it gets you. Mmm, I love it. Because I don't like sweets, so but it's so the good. does the hit you at the end? Oh yeah, it's so good. Right at the end. I love it. The drama. Still There's Hello Kitty on the elevator? Where are we going? We're going to Hello Kitty World. <laughs> Obviously, that's why I'm dressed like this. Here we're seeing some footage leading into the Hello Kitty park. There's the walls are just covered in Hello Kitty artwork and Molly's walking up some stairs that actually have Hello Kitty and like a rainbow and a bunch of cartoon artwork painted on the stairway. Yesterday was Disney Sea and obviously today I have to do Hello Kitty World. So I have my little Hello Kitty ears on. I wore pink and white so I could like 
have the kitty aesthetic. I got myself a little kitty bag. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's hang out with the kid, the kitty, the little kitty cat. So this is like uh, playing good luck for the, the theme park itself. Cute. Yeah. Okay, so we paid to skip the line. So you get we bought the fast pass, and we're about to get on the Hello Kitty boat ride. Off we go. This is fun going down. <laughs> You can smell cinnamon, right? Yeah, it smells yeah. cinnamon. <laughs> this is really fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. It's adorable. Here it's like go. Miss Kitty Town. Miss Kitty, hello. Oh, hello <laughs> Kitty, sorry. <laughs> you say hello Kitty. Miss Kitty instead of hello Kitty. Typical neighbors. Typical. You call them scoop ones that are snappy. <laughs> After the Hello Kitty boat ride, we saw a Hello Kitty show, and our guide, show, described it for us and was able to help translate the Japanese to English. Hello Kitty is cheering for everybody's dreams. <laughs> oh my lord. It's so hey Kitty, thank you for inviting us all. We're having so much fun. Everybody else has a different dream. Everybody wants to make it happen, and I know everyone feels the same way. Okay, we should never give up. Okay, we need your help. Everybody, take out your magic wand. Oh my god, this is like a... <coughs> that's how they get every, every kid to... Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're in this like kaleidoscope room. Everybody's like standing around in circles. Everybody's like standing around in circles. It is trippy, yeah. And then I got to go into Hello Kitty's house and I got to feel what everything looked like. It's like a makeup. Oh, it's where Hello Kitty does her makeup. This is so cute. That's like a photo of the rain. Oh my god. And then there's a chair. And there's a cup of tea in front of you. No. Oh I mean, we're having God. a cup of tea right Is now. It matcha? Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a blue matcha. It's a blue matcha. It's a blue matcha. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Kiki. And that's a that's a bathtub. It makes you look like you're taking a bath. This uh, that's a foam. That's foam. Oh that's a shower. That's a shower right there. Yeah, so this is a class called tea ceremony room uh, where Japanese people have a uh, matcha in a traditional style but of course you have to take off your shoes Guys, it's, it's japan you know <laughs> it's japan you gotta do it the kitty's waiting for you with her kimono no yeah. the shoes are off okay and uh two steps one Sparkles, some glitter up there. These are the lamps that have dresses. Look, I'm inside a cup of tea. Now I'm on Hello Kitty's bed, and she has all these tactile desserts. These are the strawberries, and there's a matcha cake with roses, and then this one has little chocolate sandwiches in the shape of her head. And then I even got to meet Hello Kitty to take a photo with her. I waited a very long time in line for that moment. Okay, so you sit right here. And after all of the fun, I was very hungry, so we grabbed a lunch at the Hello Kitty Cafe, and it was really cool because the food was like shaped like things. So for example, I got a traditional curry and the rice was shaped like Hello Kitty's head. Kuroni curry, they look just like the character, but it's curry and rice, and you got your Coke with, uh, this is your Coke with um, uh, the character? characters on the So wait, are the Coke? characters made of rice? Yeah. So the Hello Kitty's face is made of rice. Oh my God. It has like a ribbon design on it. I don't know if I'm just hungry, <laughs> but this pancake dessert situation with blueberry jam and whipped cream, 
Man, I am seriously not a dessert person, but the desserts here are like, like this is where you guys shine. My God. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to the Snoopy Museum because my mom is obsessed with Snoopy in a way that I don't know anybody else is. And, uh... Except people in Tokyo. She keeps calling Hello Kitty Miss Kitty. I'm gonna call Snoopy Snappy. <laughs> All the stairs at this station have like LED light strips, which I can't really see now because it's too bright out. But at night, that would be very helpful for me. On our walk from the train to the Snoopy Museum, not only did we see tons of different Snoopy statues and stuff, but also a pet pig on a leash. And I got to say hi and I'm just gonna be real with you, it might have been the highlight of the day. Lloyd. 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 Molly, his name is Lloyd. <laughs> he's lovely. He's got these waggies he's tail. He's like... <gasps> <gasps> Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Piggy. Hello, Piggy. Here we are. We're at the, the Snoopy Museum Tokyo. And the cafe, the Snoopy Cafe. My mom could not be more excited. We have arrived to her number one. The number one fan has arrived at the Snoopy Museum. She's gonna completely, good thing we have show with us because you're gonna completely forget about me. You're gonna be all wrapped up in Snoopy. Yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. It's snappy, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Snoopy. You're going out snappy. Here we're seeing footage of Molly near this ginormous Snoopy statue laying on the ground. She looks so tiny next to this humongous Snoopy. And then we're seeing some footage of her walking into a giant sized version of Snoopy's playhouse with this cartoon portrait of all of the Peanuts gang on the wall inside the house. And here's some footage of a piece of the museum. There are cartoon strips all over the walls in small black and white and in larger color. There are some tactile cutouts of the characters on the wall that Molly is feeling. And there's just so many little details, the little cartoon strips, little pieces on the wall that have explanations about the characters. It appears that that's in Japanese and then there's writing in English next to it. So much going on in here, very cool. We're at the Snoopy Cafe, of course. All right, we've acquired the Snoopy merch. Thank you. So what we have here is our Snoopy's donuts. Mm -hmm. A milkshake. With a donut on With top. With a donut on top, cherry and donut on top. Because Snoopy loves donuts. Mm -hmm. We have Mama's matcha lemonade. Mm -hmm. I'm boring, I need caffeine, so I got a latte, but look the at the The cup is amazing and the sauce. And I asked if they sold them, but they said it's sold in I'm so sad I would have bought that in a heartbeat. Does this have anything cute on it? Oh yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's a sugar uh, package. It's two sugar, uh, the Snoopy. And then, the napkins. The napkin has a comic. Okay, like man, the hike is over. We're home with little woodstocks on top. It's adorable. And, and then you've got the, the coasters. The coasters. Charm. And we're like characters. inside his house. His house. like Elton, are you trying to show off? What are you doing, buggeroons? Elton's super salty sitting here listening to me talk about all of this. He's very jealous that he did not get to come. Aren't you? Look. Look what I got for him. He's wearing his Snoopy bandana that we got him. Honestly, they were sold out of all of the best merch at the cafe and at the Snoopy shop. It was pretty upsetting, but we got what we could. So we got LT this bandana, which honestly is more for Neve Burke than yeah. for Elton John. Yeah, uh, we'll be wearing that. Yeah, my mom will be rocking this. She Actually, that'll look good with your shirt too. <laughs> um, this Snoopy shirt is from Zara Kids. It is not, unfortunately, from the Snoopy Museum. My mom would not let me buy the Snoopy stuffy that I wanted, and she has since lived to regret it. Yeah, very, 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 very much. It was so cute. It was so floofy. We already had two little suitcases, backpacks. No excuses. A person I with a cane, you. a I big forgive suitcase. You. I forgive you. Oh, where's the other thing I got, LT? Also at the Snoopy gift yeah, shop. I haven't I was, seen it yet. No, he hasn't. I was trying to get him. The bag's a little crushed. But it's from, so cute. Oh, look, he's interested. He has woken up. He it says, is for you. You did get me something. I did get you something. I wanted to get him a squeaky toy of Snoopy, but they didn't have one. So I found one that could have worked, but then instead... I... Oh, look. Oh, yeah, I look knows. so happy. You know, it is a yellow Peanuts Frisbee. And Elton loves a good thing to run after. He loves fetching. And you got... Let's go What's this on way. It? What's on it, Here's Mom? Joe Coolson's 1971, 
and it's got he's got sunglasses on he's throwing the frisbee and Woodstock catches it the little so bird cute. look LT it's for you should we play with it later he says can I eat it no <laughs> no eating just chasing he's licking it Oh, baby. He's really nosing it all the way from Japan. That was our final two days in Japan. But after this, there is another vlog coming of all the other things we did in Japan that I haven't shared yet. And there's some really fun and cool things. So I hope you're all looking forward to that. And then don't worry, you will be getting a haul of everything I bought in Japan. It was some really cool stuff. But until those videos come out, if you want some more content in Japan, you can watch this video where I talk about some of the accessibility features that I find really amazing in Tokyo, or you can click over here to see a completely non-Japan related video. See you next time. Bye.